As an entrepreneur, you're always looking for ways to build your business and that's what we're going to do in this episode because we're doing something just a little bit different than we've done normally. And We've got a guest who joined us on Stark Raving Entrepreneurs, our regular meetings that we have for members and he gave us some really good ideas that are going to help you in your business growth about building a podcast, how you can be a guest on podcasts and that really helps a lot. His name is Alex Sanfilippo. He talks about how you can use that through his company Podmatch. This is one you definitely want to hear. If you're into podcasting, if you're into growing your business, look at the principles that he talks about and how you can use it. This is one that you want to take some notes on because it's really that good. And I'll join you at the end of this as we do a recap of what you can do to grow your business. We're going to be doing things just a little bit differently today so that way we give you the maximum value and let you hear about this marvelous person that uh, you are going to love when you hear about it. His name is Alex Sanfilippo. He's an entrepreneur and the founder of Pod. Pros, which is a software company specifically focused on independent podcast hosts like us and their guests like us to elevate their voices through podcasting and be heard. Alex and his team at Pod Pros have developed popular podcasting software services such as Pod Match. Write that down if you haven't heard it. Pod Match, Podcast SOP, Pod Lottery. And in addition, Alex is also the host of the top rated podcast. Podcasting Made Simple and is one of the most sought after educators and public speakers in the podcasting industry. We know him from our experience at PodFest, one of the largest events in the world, and we get a chance to be there regularly. And so we were just, I was just frankly tickled when I knew we were going to get the Alex Sanfilippo to come on board with us to give us the inside secrets of how you can be a guest on more podcasts to get your message out one of the best ways to do it. He's going to tell you why and how. And if you're a host and you need to get some guests that are just the right kind, Alex will do that. So join me in welcoming Alex Sanfilippo with a wonderful Stark Raving Entrepreneurs. Thumbs up and cheers. Alex, welcome aboard, sir. Terry, Gina, thank you so, so much. I appreciate the warm introduction. That was uh, extremely kind. And uh, it was it was an honor to get to hang out in Orlando, Florida for uh, your backyard. For PodFest, my backyard too, but uh, super fun. So thank you so, so much for having me. And uh, Stark Raving Entrepreneurs, so excited to be here with you. Uh, live and let live. I f- sometimes find that helping others live a better life is adding value to their lives. And I believe podcast guesting is a great way to do that. And so I'm always thrilled to talk about podcast guesting. And I love the vision here. And I'm just excited to talk about mastering this idea of podcast guesting because I can see how it's really going to serve. Uh, the first thing I'll talk about is just to piggyback right off of what Gina said, which was talking about how it's how to grow visibility, right? How to 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 grow and get your name out there even more, and, and the role that podcast guesting can play in that. So really excited to dive into that. And the, the first thing I'm going to share here is like a little bonus that I, within the last I guess year, really learned about podcast guesting. I was trying to get a new domain up and running, uh, so one of my websites, and I was I had a schedule like six weeks after launching the website to meet with an SEO an SEO expert to to talk about it. And, but I was mentioning on every podcast I was on. So when I got on the call with this person, he goes, Hey man, he goes, what have you been doing? And I was like, really not much yet. And he goes, this is the highest domain authority I've seen on such a young website. He's like, there had to be something you were doing. And we started diving into it and he goes, Oh dude, he's like, you have links from Apple, from Spotify, from Google, from YouTube, and from literally thousands of other publications. Turns out I was mentioning it on podcasts and people were putting those links in the description and that was feeding that domain, giving it a higher authority. So here's something that's really interesting to think about. Just like an early side note, if you will, pretend there's no one who ever hears the podcast. Pretend like the host did a terrible job or you didn't even do a good job. At the very least, if you're getting a link mentioned, it's increasing your domain authority. The internet thinks higher of you as a result. Because here's the thing, if Google said, if Google asks Apple, Hey, uh, is is Dorothy legit? And Google says, or uh, Apple says, yeah, Google, they're, they're, she's legit. Then Google then believes that, right? So that's a little side note bonus, but that's not really the value I want to talk about. But just keep that in mind. Because of that, I don't really mind if the audience is extremely small, because I know that's a win right there. But if I can add value to one life, it's worth it. And I'll get into that in a minute. But beyond the the actual visibility from an SEO standpoint. We're finding podcasting more and more becoming the preferred medium of successful people to learn and to grow. Uh, 
how many, listen, I love YouTube. YouTube's great if you're trying to fix something around the house or the car, right? Like it, it's great for that. But how many of you have two hours a day to sit and watch YouTube, right? If I give you an option to listen to that instead, won't you take that option, <laughs> right? I'll take that option any day. And we find it's just the reality of it. The most successful people on the planet feel the same way. They're saying, if I can listen to this instead of have to sit stationary for two hours, I would much rather go listen to it. But here's the other thing that's really interesting about that. I don't know about all of you, but when I was when I was a kid, I had some learning issues. Let's just put it that way, right? And I ended up going to doctors and stuff like that. And one doctor told my mom, he said, hey, next time you're trying to explain something to Alex, I want you to put something in front of him. Give him something to do with his hands and see if he responds differently. So one time my mom was having a sit down conversation with me, probably because I was being a bratty little kid, because that's what I did. Um, God bless my mom. She is a saint, by the way. I love that woman. I'm so thankful for her. And uh, we have a great friendship now, by the way. But I was a little brat. And uh, she put Legos in front of me. And then so like, hey, just play with these Legos. And then she explained something to me. To me. And she said I retained 100% of what she said. Most entrepreneurs, business owners, leaders have a hard time. Like they'll say, hey, I might like how often do you hear an entrepreneur say I'm ADHD. I have a trouble focusing, right? Like it just tends to be one of the traits that entrepreneurs and business leaders have. But if they can do something while they're listening, they can retain better. Podcasting allows us to do that. We can drive, we can work out, we can cook, we can clean, right? We can do all these different things that don't really take any, any uh, focus while listening. And most of us retain better. So again, think about how valuable that is. If that's your voice that somebody's letting speak to them for 45 minutes and they're retaining it at a really high level, that's huge, right? And the last thing I want to share is that social media and podcasting are not the same thing. And I'm not here to dog social media. It totally has its place. I totally believe in social media, but it's not apples for apples. And I say that because if I post a picture tomorrow and it gets 50 likes, let's say, um, that's not as valuable as 50 listeners by a long shot. Because I might be like this in bed, scrolling through, double tap, next, right? That might be my social media engagement, if you will. But if I'm listening to a podcast, I want you to get this perspective. It's as valuable as me sitting in a seat and that person talking to me on a stage. I firmly believe it is as valuable as that. So again, if there's 50 people in a room that want to hear you talk, are you going to show up in that room? Would you show up every week? If those 50 people wanted to hear from you or those 30 people or 20, I don't know about you, but I'd say yes every week to that opportunity to talk to my ideal audience. But when we think about it, like, oh, 20 people, that's like getting 20 likes on social media. That's not very good. It's not the same at all. I recently had somebody tell me, hey, Alex, I'm not going on any podcast unless it has 500,000 people listening every week. And I, I kindly kind of brought in like a, like, I don't know, like a passive way. asked him like, when was the last time you spoke on a stage with 500,000 people in the room? And he goes, uh... He goes, I don't know if there's rooms like that. I'm like, yeah, it's called podcasting. And I don't think that you've ever spoken on a stage that big, but what's wrong with 100 people? If it's the right 100 people, isn't that great? So again, that's kind of the perspective I want you to have on, on how podcasting can really serve at, from a guesting side or being a host. Like it's really great on both sides. So um, yeah, think about podcasting, what it can do from a visibility, from a growth standpoint for you. And it's not as big numbers, but it's really big on impact, which is what I really think matters. And uh, the next thing I'll share here quickly, uh, kind of transition this from like, how and why podcasting can help you from a visibility standpoint. Talk about the state of podcast guesting real quick. I uh, hope you all are okay with that. I'm going to go into some of the, the data here. And I have this written down, so forgive me if I'm looking down at my screen, but I want to not quote the numbers wrong. This is from a report that me and my team generate along with another company every month. And interestingly enough, podcasting numbers from a host perspective are down. So there are almost, on Apple Podcasts, by the way, is what I track, there's almost 3 million podcasts now. Uh, that number is slow. It used to like climb really fast. Now it's starting to slow. So like getting to the 3 million point has been like a very, very slow process. But at that 3 million, there are less than 400,000, just under 400,000 that are actually active. So there's there's less than that they're active. And if you look at shows that are independently driven, so they're not like run by big networks, they're not true crime shows, they're not any of these type of things. They're all independent interview-based shows that are active right now. There's just over... Uh, 115,000 in total. And again, looking at the numbers here, I'm rounding it a little bit. So, and I have all this data. Um, so I, I can definitely share that. Uh, it's on a report that's public. And, uh, but so think about it, there's only 115,000 shows that are looking for guests at any given time. And the amount of people that make it as podcasters to like 100 episodes that we track is less than 6%. So podcasting churns a lot. And, and so here's the like numbers are down on every way, except for listenership. Listenership is climbing at an all time high right now. 
And that's because big media is talking about podcasting, whether it's positive or negative, it all does the same thing, which causes people to go discover podcasts. And uh, some other great news in the the industry um, is that we, uh, Joe Rogan and Call Her Daddy, which I've never listened to that podcast. I don't know what it's about. So forgive me for referencing it, but it's a big show apparently. Um, and I actually don't listen to Joe Rogan's show either, but both those shows are huge and they just ended exclusives with Spotify to go to all the other platforms, which is great for podcasting. That will actually cause more listenership to come into the space as well. So I share all that to to make you think, like it's interesting how podcast from a host perspective is dropping, uh, less people are succeeding than ever in the space, but listenership is climbing, which means all the shows that are active are doing better. So the smaller shows are even getting bigger listener bases as well. Now I share that and I think it's really important because there's one more metric and it's podcast guesting. This is the first place I've said this publicly, so I'm going to go ahead and share this. But I think that the thing that could potentially kill podcasting is podcast guesting. And here's why I say that. Right now, and this data is extremely loose, we, we, we're having a really hard time capturing this data, but we wanted to see how many people on any given day are looking to be a guest on a podcast. So right now, today, there's 115,000 shows looking for guests, and there is just over 2.5 million people looking to be a guest today which comes up to, I can't remember the exact number. Basically, any given day, there's 21 people looking to be on a show, uh, on your show specifically, if you have one, right? What I think might kill podcasting if we don't figure out a solution is that in two years, when everyone sees how valuable podcast guesting is, what if there's 20 million people trying and every day someone wakes up and has literally 100 emails of people wanting to be a guest on their show, right? Uh, that's going to tell a host, I can't do this because I can't keep up with this. Um what I do is pod match and we are working on a solution to make sure that we build a foundation that serves both sides of the mics, uh, both sides of the mic in a way that really will help them. But I bring that up because if you want to be a guest on a podcast, you have to work harder than ever. In 2018, I'll go back to that time. I could not convince anyone to be a guest on my podcast. And I actually had at that point, a really big show. It was an entrepreneurship based show. It was, it was big. Leaders were like, dude, why would I waste my time being on your podcast? Like, that's the dumbest thing I've ever heard. 2020 rolls around. People are like, I want to be on a podcast. Don't know how. I want guests. Don't know how. And now fast forward to now, everyone is like, please, I will do anything to be a, a guest on your podcast. Right. And I always joke around by saying, in, 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 uh, if Taylor Swift was like, I want to be on your podcast to talk about global influence, I'd say, what, why? Give me your perspective. I got 10 other guests that want to talk about the same thing that are all more qualified than you, right? Obviously, it's an extreme, but now I can reach out to anyone on the planet and they will say yes to being a guest on my podcast. Not because my podcast is anything great, but because everyone sees this opportunity. So that's going to transition to this next point here. And Gina and, and Terry, am I good? Still keep on going? Are you all okay? Just making sure that I'm okay here and keep on moving. Uh, everyone with me? You all here? Yeah, cool. we're loving it, Alex. Keep going. You're on a cool. roll, my man. Thanks. Thanks. Appreciate it. Um, so the next thing I'll talk about is, is how to be that guest that should be on podcast, right? Like what's going to make you stand out among the 2.5 million people and going on 20 million people sometime, right? Like how do you end up being that one that gets picked right now? It's between you and 19 other people, right? So there's 20 people pitching at any given time. Like how do you be the one that gets picked? The first thing I want to talk about is how not, and I encourage you to take notes at this part, but not all podcasts are created equal for you. Not all podcasts are created equal for you. The days of spray and pray are behind us. Hey, host, great show. Would love to be a guest on it. Talk about X, Y, Z. And I still to this day have emails every day, people trying that. The most recent one I got was a group of veterinarians. I had tons of veterinarians want to be on my show. My podcast is about podcasting. <laughs> I Listen, I don't know, like, and, and some of them, like, I'll always respond because I just think it's a polite thing to do, but they'll try to, like, give me an angle, be like, well... People are sometimes listening to podcasts while their pet is being seen. I'm like, wow, that's a that is an intense stretch. You know, like I I should have them on just for that, right? But my point is, not all podcasts are created equal for you. Now, if I had a podcast about pets, that would be a really great fit, probably. But we can't just go out and be like, please, everybody, everybody, have me on your show, have me on your show. Well, you have to sit down yourself, and you have to get really specific in who it is you serve how you can actually add value to somebody's life so that you can figure out the type of shows that you should be on. So I always say this, like pick a niche, pick a lane that you know that you can be in. And the best way I found to do this is to start with why. Sit down with pen and paper. Look, I've got pen and paper right here, right? Like, I don't know if you've ever seen this. this, is, this is, there's paper inside this little book and this is a pen. You write on it, right? Get alone with just you and your thoughts. Like not with the computer in front of you to, to do the research, just pen and paper and really think about why am I doing this? Who is it that I serve? 
and really answer that question for yourself. Because at that point, you're now able to go back and say, this is the person I serve. This is my why. This is my purpose for getting into podcast guesting. And while you're doing that, the next thing you want to do is create what I call an avatar, which is not the blue people on that movie, which they are as well, but like a fictitious character or real character that describes who it is that you want to listen to you. So again, thinking about podcast guesting, like being on a stage, who's in that audience that you say, I'm here for that person specifically. Make that really, really, really narrow specific. Think about the one person that you say, that's who I serve. Now, of course, you can serve a broader audience, but have the one person in mind so you're always focused on serving that person, right? My fictitious character's name is Adam, and I always keep Adam top of mind. And when I'm thinking about being a guest on a podcast before I pitch or they ask me, I always ask myself, would Adam gain value from this? Is Adam listening to this? And I find that typically the answer is no. And so I, I've started saying no to more podcasts than, than saying yes. I'm not telling you to start doing that immediately. I'm not trying to sound like I get on all the shows, right? But sometimes it's it's because me and someone have some rapport, but I realize like their podcast serves a very different person than I'm able to actually show up and serve. So it's actually in both our best interest for me not to be there. And I typically position it that way. I'm like, hey, listen, I'd love to, but I know that I'm not going to serve in the way that I want to show up and serve. And I'm not doing you or your audience a favor by doing that. And sometimes we're so focused on the influence and the growth that can be hard to do. But I'm telling you, if you can get really focused and just go off those specific shows, it's a win. And a hint, like I've been getting at, it's not just the big shows. It's any of them that really have that avatar in mind. Would it be better to be on a show with a million people listening that aren't your audience or one that has 100 people that they're all your ideal audience, right? You want to get really specific with this because you'll find I'm going to succeed more by not going after the Joe Rogans or call her daddies. I did air quotes there, right? Of, of the world, but the really big shows that everyone wants to be on. Instead say, hey, this one's got 30 people listening, but those 30 people, I can serve them really, really well, right? So you want to think about it that way. So have this, this avatar, know your niche, know your why, get, get into the purpose of why you're behind it. And uh, I'll, I'll keep on moving through this now because this is going to get real tactful. So I'm going to get more into the training side of it here. Uh, the next thing is to have a one sheet, some sort of media one sheet. I will share this. If you if you use Podmatch, it builds one for you and it's digital. You can share it inside and outside of Podmatch. And I'm not here to pitch that to you in any way. Um, I know that you all have an affiliate link, by the way, if you don't mind dropping that in the chat in case anyone is interested. But go look at it later, but make sure that you use you use the uh, the Stark Raving Entrepreneurs link because that, that's very important to me is to 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 respect them uh, because they 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 blessed me with this platform today. So make sure that you check that out. And um, anyway, but look at it later. But it'll help you build a digital one sheet. And the one sheet is basically for a host to see everything they would need to know about you. Now it's not going back to like where you were born and stuff like that, right? Like they maybe don't need all that unless it's super interesting, of course. But all the relevant stuff. And, and I'm not going to get into each of those little things now, but some basics are have some photos they can use, have a bio that they can read. Like Terry didn't do hours of research to figure out everything he said about me. Although Terry, you did a good job with that. So maybe you did more than I'm, I don't mean to not give you enough credit, um, but oh, in general, you. yeah, no problem. Uh, in, in general, uh, hosts will want a bio so they know what to read. And the other thing is you're giving them direction. They may not read it word for word, but you're helping them by saying, this is what I want you to know about me, Right. And so have your bio description, some photos, uh, some links where they can find a little bit more about you. It's really important that you have all this together. So again, the host can say, okay, I understand this. And most hosts are still going to go do their research. But what you're telling them is I want to go this way. When you don't have something like this, I've had this happen before I had like a one sheet before Podmatch was a thing. I went on a podcast wanting to talk about uh, podcasting because that's what I like to do, right? But I, at that point, I had a full-time job in aerospace and this is going back many years. And the whole conversation was focused on that because when the hosts are doing their research, I didn't give them any general direction. So he saw full-time aerospace guy. We're talking about that, right? And I ended up having a, a great conversation, but it didn't go anywhere I wanted it to go because it wasn't my focus, but I didn't tell them I want to be in this lane, right? So having a media one sheet is very important. Again, uh, th there's other resources for it as well, I'm sure. I, I don't know where they are, um, but Podmatch gives you a public and private facing one. We'll ask you all the questions and run you through that. But very important you have that because the next step, more notes here, is creating your pitch. Your pitch is your outreach to podcasters. So it's how you reach out to them saying, um, saying I want to be a guest on the podcast, right? And I'm going to walk through the five things that I do every time. Having a one sheet in it is very important. And I'll mention that the reason I say that that's important, I talk about that beforehand, is because you want to keep this as short as possible. Like, don't be so short that you're not using full sentences and stuff, but you want to keep it really short because I'll give you a little secret about podcast hosts that I've learned. We talk because we don't want to read too much. 
And so I've had some people pitch and literally it's 10 paragraphs and I'm like reading it because again, I, I like to respond to everything and maybe, maybe I shouldn't, I don't know, but I, I feel like that's respectful. And so I'm like reading through it and I'm like, oh man, this is a lot, <laughs> you know, like I, this is a lot, like, could we make this a little bit more tactful, right? So you want to link to a lot of the things so you don't have to share them in here because if you don't have a media one sheet, you've got to include a lot of details that make it much longer. So again, the idea in this pitch is to keep it short. And this is your initial message, email, whatever it might be to a podcast host. So these are the, the five things I do along with keeping it short in mind, right? Step one is to lead with value. Lead with value. I'll tell you what lead with value doesn't mean. It means starting off, hey host, I have a book. I run this company. I would like to be a guest. I, 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 I. Nothing in that says anything about them, their audience, what they're working toward. If you lead with those things, uh, you're automatically putting their mind that like, this is for you, the guest, right? This is for me, the guest, not for you, the host. And so you want to lead with value. And the best way I found to do that, and I've actually only had two people ever do this with me, and they both came on my show, uh, spoiler there. Uh, what the best thing to do is say, hey, uh, Gina, check out your podcast. Really, really enjoyed what you do. I listened to the episode that you did with Susan. It was just really well done. I like it so much. I left you a five-star rating and review on Apple Podcast. I went ahead and attached that here in this email. Listen, if you do that, I'm telling you, you at the very least have that host's attention. They're saying, go on, <laughs> right? What else? Like you clearly did the time, right? But if you say, hey, host, not sure what your name is, loved your latest episode. It's like, okay, did you just say that? Because I get that email every day, right? From other people. So you want to make sure you lead with value and it takes a little bit of effort and time, but it does make you really, really stand out. So again, I, I encourage you, mention the host, mention something that you liked. Even if you want to go the extra mile, attach a five-star rating and review of Apple Podcasts, leaving that review for them because that will really make you stand out in their eyes. So that's step one. Step two is to make a meaningful request. Make a meaningful request. I get a lot of pitches where I don't actually know what they want from me. <laughs> I read it and I'm like, do they want to be a guest on my podcast or do they want me to buy something from, I don't know what they want because there's no clarity in it. You want to really set the expectation very early. I'm not saying, Hey, I want to be a guest, right? What making a meaningful request means that would just be a request. By the way, I want to be a guest is just a request, but saying uh, making a meaningful request means that you do a little bit of work. So for me, what I like to do is I like to go through their at least recent backlog of episodes to see if my topic has been covered recently Again, I've already quantified that I know that I'd be a good fit, right? Because I, I know my why, I know my avatar, they're, they're listening to this podcast. So I know what value I can add, but has anyone else done that recently? And I'll scroll through it. Uh, a great example is I was on a really big podcast a couple of years ago where I, uh, I scrolled through seven years. It wasn't as long as you think. I scrolled the bottom, so it was all on one page. I hit control F and typed in some keywords. I couldn't find them anywhere, which means they hadn't covered it, right? And so I basically said, hey, listen, I went through seven years of episodes and I put in like parentheses. Yeah, I know that's a lot. I noticed you hadn't talked about podcast guesting in the last seven years, but I think that'd be very valuable for your entrepreneurs that are trying to grow their businesses as a creative marketing idea. I'd love to be the guest to come on the show to talk about this. Here's the thing that host once again is like, have I really not covered this? <laughs> right? Like, have, have I really not done this? That's the question that they're asking themselves. They're saying, oh my goodness, like I can't believe that. So now once again, you have, you have their interest. They're saying, okay, wow. That, that's really fascinating. And so the next thing you want to do after making that meaningful request, again, going through doing a little bit of extra work is the third thing is to offer credibility. Credibility in the internet age has changed quite a bit. Credibility used to mean your degree, the companies you've worked for, things that you've accomplished, right? Like all those things used to be uh, what would give you credibility. Now credibility is who you know that they also know. Again, requires a little bit of research, but if you go to some of their social media profiles, a lot of them show who you follow in common, or you can scroll through their episodes. You know anyone's name that's in that sphere. All I have to do is if I want to be on, let's imagine, let's just say that um, Gina and uh, Terry have different shows. If I say, I was recently on Terry's show, here's the link to that episode. Gina's going to be like, oh, of course you can come on my podcast. I don't need to know anything else about you, right? I don't, I, I don't need to because you've already proven that you know that. Uh, another example is I'm like kind of flipping the script here. I was recently on a podcast that hadn't launched yet. I have a very strict no-go on shows that have not launched policy. Very strict. I never do that because I I've learned after doing like 20 of those, none of them ever launched, right? Like that ends up happening. But this person did something different. She said, I loved having this show. It's launching in six weeks. Uh, I've already had 
four people that you know on the show. And she named all four of them. And they're all four people that I really respect that if I can get in the same room as them, I'm going to take the opportunity any day of the week. I literally just responded. I said, send me whatever date and time you want. I'm there because she offered credibility of who I know that she also knows. Find a way to do that. And this is again, where the media one sheet comes in common. You don't need to fill out all the rest of it. If they want to know more about you saying, by the way, Here's all of my details that I, you could possibly want to know about me, probably TMI, right? I always put humor in it and then link to your media one sheet. So if now, if they are saying, okay, we know the same people, but I do want to learn more, they can click it and go learn more, right? Next thing we're going to do here, step four is to mention sharing the episode. Now, please make sure you have integrity. If you have no intent on sharing it, or you don't think that's something that you want to do, then don't skip this step. But if you are willing to share it, that's very valuable to a podcast host because they most of us, it's a labor of love. We pour our hearts and souls into our podcast. And it's almost a little sad when the guest isn't even willing to share it at all. And you don't have to, right? I'm not saying you have to, but if you're willing to share that up front. So what I always say is, hey, listen, if I can be a guest, I'd love to share the episode. I'll even link to it from my website and a blog post will do about it. And hosts are always like, wow, thank you. Like, it's so kind of you. Like, I work so hard on this. I would love for that to happen right? So mention sharing the episode if you are honestly going to share the episode. Now, of course, there's the exceptions where maybe it's terrible. In that case, don't. But if it's good, share it. Uh, and the last thing here, step five, is to make it easy to say no. I find if you get these first four things right, a host might not respond because they don't want to break your heart. If they just had a guest on that has a similar experience or it's just like they're pausing the show, they might not respond because they're like, oh man, they put in all this work. I can't tell them no. I don't know if anyone here else is like me. I'm raising my hand right now. Um, I don't really like confrontation. Like I'll, I'll avoid it if I can. And I, I should, I'm working on that a little bit, right? Uh, but the reality of it is it's not really my favorite thing. So making it easy to say no simply means, hey, even if you don't want to have me as a guest, no worries. I'd love to hear back from you. And I really only want to be on the show if I can truly add value. But either way, I would love to hear back, right? You give them permission to break your heart without breaking your heart so that you can open the dialogue. And I've learned that a no typically means not now. Maybe they did just have a guest on there, but they might say, hey, if you fall back in six months because you gave me permission to tell you no, I would love to make this happen. Snooze that email for six months and go back to it, right? So I, I found this to be very valuable because it opens a connection instead of it just being a general outreach and now gives them permission to really have that conversation with you. And uh, so that's kind of my whole idea. Like I went through the whole flow here and the last thing I'll share is kind of just some motivation around it. When we're being a guest on a podcast, yes, we are going to grow our visibility. We're going to grow our reputation. We're going to do a great job. But at the end of the day, remember this. Seek to be a person of value, not a person of profit. Seek to be a person of value, not a person of profit. My best podcast guests I've ever had are the people that show up willing to give it all and don't want anything in return. They end up being the ones that get more in return anyway, but it's because they're there to serve. And podcast listeners, again, they're savvy human beings. When they realize this person's here for me because they want to make my life better, that's who they want to know. That's who they want to work with. And so again, seek to be a person of value, not a person of profit. I find the profit usually follows the value that you add. And with that, that's it. All right. Well, Alex, a lot of good information there. We really appreciate that. And looking forward to uh, asking you and learning even more. I like that. Be a person of value. And then the profits will come in that way. Don't seek the profits initially. Now, I also know that at 4.30 our time here in Eastern Zone, you've got something special that's going to knock you out of here, and then you'll be coming back. Is that correct, Alec? Maybe. We're going to see in exactly one minute here, and I'll start sharing. Oh, it's funny. Alicia, my wife, is already here. So for everyone joining, I'm like a digital minimalist, which is weird for a software guy, but my computer... I am a quote unquote child on my computer. So my screen time expires at 4.30 every day. And uh, I told Gina's like, I would really love for you to be here later. Can you please, can you please hang around? So I don't know what happens at 4.30. My screen just went blank. I don't know if you all can hear me. So hold on, I'm gonna hit. We can still hear you, Alex. Wow, really? Can you all and see me too? it is after 4.30 now. Can here, you still? Because I, time okay. Room. So Alicia's here and she is now going to let me in the room. The magic key. Thank you, Alicia. <laughs> right, let's make sure that worked real quick. Hold on, let me make sure it worked. And then you're out to enter it one more time. So yeah, my computer doesn't let me on after a certain time. Um, nice. You know, I respect that. I respect <laughs> that you have those boundaries set in there, but you're making an adjustment for us today and uh, make sure that people get a lot of value. Yeah. Oh, for sure. And it's, hold on a second. Let me see. Okay. I'm back. I have never been on a computer or in recent time, I've not been on a computer past 4.30. This is amazing. The internet still works after 4.30. It still works. Isn't that amazing? <laughs> Who would have known? I'm back, by the way. I'm, I'm good. Thank you for the grace, everybody. I appreciate it. Yeah, wow. Okay, right down somewhere. Gina, what do you think? You've just given us a boatload of great information. 
Oh, absolutely, Anne. Of course, we've been part of the PodFest community for several years, Terry and I, oh, yeah. and Alex has as well. And so when I went to the PodFest, Best folks, Andrew and Chris Kremitzos recently, Andrew Weiss, uh, and said, "Hey, we want to we want to feature a specialist on podcast guesting. Who do you recommend?" And of it's course, Alex. <laughs> Alex was uh, the only well, name you. recommended. So yeah, I love that. Yes. <laughs> I'm honored. That's amazing. They're they're Literally people I really much so respect. So thank you. Alex is one of the best in the world on this. That is not hyperbole in the world. And he's a person you definitely want to get to know. Check out his company and what it can do, Matt. And I also know at uh, 14 or at 1645, 445, you need to uh, exit and take care of some other no, things. Now so. I can I can be here as, as late as you all need. So kick me out at 445 if that's the plan. Oh, um, okay. But I can be here for as long as you all need. I'm, I'm, I'm Alicia unlocked it. I'm good. So I'm here. Well, I think that'll be good. And I think one of the things we like to do is to open it up for questions. And yeah. we see our good buddy, Chris Stone there is up on uh, stage today. Chris, welcome aboard. What is your question or comment? Thank I you, Captain. Guy, Huge Chris Stone fan, everybody. Just so you all know. <laughs> right yes, indeed. What's up, bro? <laughs> What's up, Alex? Uh, yeah, long time listener, first time caller. And uh, no, I, I really, the the thing that really caught me, and I've, I've watched many, many um, uh, of a time where you have spoken, and this is something that, that really resonated with me, was uh, as a part of the meaningful request, you had mentioned researching what hasn't been covered yet. And that is just, that's just so, to me, I almost move that to the top in terms of like, because it, it does two things. Number one, it shows that you're, you're ready to deliver to that person's audience, but also you even spoke about it. You were like, that's going to make somebody pause. Like, have I really not covered that? It almost may, it all, almost puts a task on them to do that. But you had mentioned some, you know, your process and kind of researching. I know it was like, you know, seven years of episodes. I'm definitely not doing that. But what is, you know, what's that process for, for doing it? Do you just go to Apple Podcasts and kind of scroll down? Do you copy paste kind of, you know, the whole keyword process? Because that's really something that I'm going to implement in in what I'm doing. Good yeah, question. Uh, yeah. Um, am, am I able to share a screen? Because I'll just show you exactly what I do. Um, yeah, just a second. I thought that might happen. There you Thank go. You. All right. Let me uh, give me a second. down you. Oh, yo, 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 yo. Now you can share a screen. <laughs> <laughs> pretty, pretty magical stuff here. All right. So it I is. pulled, I pulled up a, uh, oh wait, I'm not sharing my screen yet. Yeah. We're not seeing your screen yet. Okay. There. Now it should be now Entrepreneurs on Fire. You all yes, see that? Yes. John Lee Dumas, our buddy. Yeah. So what I, what I'll do is I'll just go through like I just did. So it says, and there's probably a better way to do this how I do it. So I'll go through here and I'll just, I went through a ton of these. So I, I did this for like three to five, I don't know, like maybe five minutes. And it got me through like years of stuff. So I just kept on scrolling down and there's a faster way to do it. I'm just not doing it right now. But then I just hit control F and I typed in guesting and I didn't see guesting come up. Right. And I typed in podcast and podcast showed up in some places, but not where I wanted it to, right? So I just went through really quick. I typed in guesting, just guest, right? There it came up once. And so I, was, I want to talk about podcast guesting. I'm just using this as an example, by, by the way, because he has a lot of episodes. So I went straight to his show. And uh, now th that's like how I'm doing that research. So I'm just typing in all the keywords. And there's a chance maybe I'd miss it. But after 10 or 15 keywords, if those aren't even mentioned in the first part of the description, it's probably not the main focus. So that, Chris, is how I've done that. I'll stop sharing my screen now. Awesome. Thank you. Yeah. There's probably a better way, like I said, but that is what I've done. Right, Wonderful. Have... Thank you, Chris. And, and thank uh, you for your, for your question. Very, very good. Chris was on my podcast, by the way, it didn't come out for a few weeks, but um, I am so thrilled about what he shared. So anyway, t mm. TBD on the date and everything like that, but it's coming <laughs> out in the future. <laughs> it was my honor. Thank you. Thanks, man. And we have Sherry Richland. Sherry, hey, I know Sherry. you've been doing a lot with this kind of thing. What's your comment or question? Well, this has been fantastic because I'm just getting started in my business and I want to be a guest on other people's podcasts and I cover divorce and surviving divorce. Um, my first comment is why would somebody not share this with their own community and spread it out? That just doesn't make any sense to me. Uh, I don't know. Um <laughs> I, I, I always share all of it. I, I really, I don't. The only thing I can think of is there's, there are a lot of people that are seeing the value of podcast guesting. So it's sort of like they want to get on a hundred shows in a month 
just because it, it gives them that clout and they don't have time to share it. Like they, their, their audience doesn't care or they're very like protective of the type of content they share. And so they, they don't, but again, I'm like, why are you being a guest on the show? If it's not the right type of con, I don't, I don't know. I, yeah. I don't really have an answer for that, but it is far more common than you would imagine. Um, I'd wow. say it's, it's more the norm to not share it than to share it. Um, and I, I don't know why, um, but uh, yeah, that uh, makes, sorry, I wish I had something sense. more for you, but I love that you would be interested in sharing it. It provides great content. Um, anytime someone sends me something, it's like a clip of me speaking on the podcast. I, I do that. Like example, I was on Chris Stone. I'll use Chris. Sorry. I'll, I'll leave you alone after this. I was on his podcast. When was that? Like a year, two years? No, a year and a half ago, probably, right? About a year and a half ago in Dealcasters, yeah. They still share clips from that. And I still reshare them and, and send them in my community and all that stuff because they're still posting it, right? So mm-hmm. I'm all for it. It's good content. We looked good. We, we spoke, said some cool stuff. So anyway. Yeah, exactly. Sounds One great. thing I always heard is it's really good to have that. You want to be on, by default, I just say yes to a number of podcasts that I'm on because I find I get value from being with them. I learn about them. I meet some wonderful people. And uh, plus, if I get a recording, I can take that one excerpt of three minutes and 47 seconds when I was saying something really good and I can pull that out and repurpose it and everybody wins all the way around. Yeah. 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 I couldn't agree more. And Doreen, uh, uh, coming in from uh, near Seattle uh, uh, today, not Not Mexico. Mexico? Come on, Doreen, where are you at? (laughs) I am not not Mexico today. Usually I'm this Mexico, but not today. (laughs) It seems like a very bad trade, by the way. This time of year, I definitely think I'd choose Mexico. Anybody else? Anyway, sorry. Yeah, yeah, yeah I would too. This was this was not by choice. Okay, all right. Um, I I just joined a pod match a few oh, weeks you. ago. Yeah, and um, I had one of the best interviews that I have ever had with anyone. Yesterday um, came as a result of that. Cool. And um, it was just, we were just a super match. And now we're sort of talking about a collaboration in the future and doing and doing something else on a particular subject in November. Um, but I am struggling with um, <laughs> guesting, the guesting side of it. I promise I watched all 10 of your videos. I watched <laughs> them twice. You knew there was 10, I, so I already know that you did. So, yeah. <laughs> <laughs> There's 10 of them. I watched them twice. I did everything you said, and I'm still like, oh, I go in there every day and I try and tweak it. Do you have any recommendations for me at this point? Yeah. Um, so Alicia, who came in here and freed me from the the lockout of my computer, um, she is great at the the profile setup. She's like our native pro, if you will. What I'd love for you to do is just email team at podmatch.com. That's me or Alicia, and I'll know exactly what you're talking about. But let us know. Just ask for like us to review your profile, and she can go through and help make sure that it's set up and optimized properly. Sometimes, it's not often. Sometimes there's like a bit of a like some glitches that happen. It's very occasional, but it sounds like maybe that happened to you if it's not really working properly. So she can again optimize, make sure everything's working, and get it set up really well with you. So that would be my suggestion: is let her do some hands-on help with you for a little bit. Thank you. I really appreciate that yeah, because I'm very, I'm very keen and I've been a good student for all two and a half weeks. <laughs> <laughs> you knew I had 10 videos, you've watched them. I would say so. Um, <laughs> so, so yeah, thank you for that. But yeah, team at podmatch.com. That's only me and Alicia check that email. So we'll, uh, we'll make sure we help you out. Sorry for the trouble. Make sure we get that sorted out. Oh, no, way. no problems. Uh, I mean, I'm enjoying it otherwise because it's very interesting. And the thing that it's done for me as a new podcaster, I've only been podcasting about six months so far, and I have 50 episodes out. <laughs> Yay. That's amazing. Yay. I'm going to look up the data real quick. Uh, I actually <laughs> said I'd share that. I'll, I'm going to share that report. But so you have 50 episodes. Just so you, for some perspective, real quick, and then I'll, I'll, I'll we'll move on to the next person here. Fifty episodes, you have a nine point three three percent chance of making it there. So, congrats, you're in the top ten percentile of podcasters from an episode standpoint. Excellent. Um, yeah. I share that. I, I just dropped the link to where I share all the the fun data stuff. But anyway, um, congratulations. Fifty episodes, incredible. I love that. Well, I'm, I'm just really enjoying Podmatch because what it's done is it's given me a lot of confidence to say no to people who are not a good fit. Good. That's so great. it's built my it builds my confidence as a new podcaster and it's made me more certain of my topic. So I just wanted to add that. Thanks for everything. Thank you. I appreciate it. I love that. Hey, hey! Before we, uh, I see there's some more people up with uh, with their hands up for questions, which is fantastic. But before we go to that, I want to show you guys the 
one sheet that I just set up, I just joined today. And so I got started with it. It was a fantastic process. It really made me think through and clarify, okay, why do I want to be uh, interviewed? And what am I going to talk about? And I have a lot of clarity already, but it was, it was a great process to walk through. And I also want to let you guys know, you're probably thinking this could be a very expensive service because it sounds like such a great service and, and it is a great service and it's not that expensive. I'm really impressed, Alex, at how you've been able to keep the cost low because of the way you've automated, because you've added the software to it. It's not people dialing up and, and putting people together. It's the smart way to do this. So do you want to just walk through real quickly as I'm pulling this up here? Sure. What the, um, what the prices are here. I'm going to go look up the pricing. Uh -huh. um, <laughs> uh, give me a second here. I'll, I'll look it up myself. Um, yeah, we like you said, though, I appreciate you saying that. We did our best to um, to keep it really affordable was very important to us because we want it to serve real people. And there, there are companies that charge a premium for this type of thing. And they do their they do what they want to do and I, I love i think it's great there's a model for that as well but like when we wanted to capture independent voices like we talked about earlier on um i just i didn't want to price those people out right like and so we we really kind of tweaked it a little bit and figured it out but if you're a host it's six dollars a month uh and if you're a guest it's 26 dollars a month if you're both it's 32 just adds the two together and then there's a professional version, uh, which you do not need. I always say start on the standard plan, but the professional plan is 57 a month, whether you're a guest host or both. Um, and those are, those are our pricing models. And it's, it's not like that gets you this it, it's unlimited. If you want to do a hundred a month, which I don't suggest you can, right. If you want to do one a month, it's going to be that same price. And we just did our best to make it really simple for people. But again, we wanted to price it at a point we've built systems internally, make sure we can keep the price where it is because we want it to serve independent voices, right? Like, again, if I, if I was charging $1,000 a month, I'm going to get corporations and nothing against them, but I, I lose who it is I'm looking to serve. So we, we've done our best to keep it this way. And uh, for, maybe it's may, kept us from, from growing to the highest level we could, but we're serving who we want to serve. So I'm glad you brought that up. It's it, That's very important to me to keep it at a realistic price point. And yes, we, we, we also, something a lot of people mentioned, like, oh, you don't have a free version at all. Like, we don't. It, it's it's a premium network. It's other people that really value their message. They're all like, most of them are like-minded. Uh, we're always pruning the group, but uh, it's just been very valuable for a lot of people. And for that reason, we want to make sure we protected everybody inside of it. So um, my rant Thank is now over. Thank you for over. doing that. Thank Excellent. You. Well, let me it. see if I can share my screen here. Yes, real quickly. And then we'll come to you, Stephanie, and to Connor. Uh, so this is, you, you can see this, right? Yeah, yeah. Okay, great. Okay, so this is what I set up today. It, it took a few minutes, I don't know, 30 minutes, maybe maybe an hour, but I think it's about 30 minutes. Uh, my buddy ChatGPT helped me a lot and I just clarified. And so what's beautiful about this is it's not just an internal document for the Podmatch world, which is fantastic. It's also something that you can easily share. And I know it's something that, um, has tripped me up before when I've been asked to be interviewed as, oh, okay, I got to get my bio together and my photo and all that. And in the past, I've had really good press pages, but I just don't have one right now. And so this is nice. I really like it. It really makes it easy for people to figure out how to, um, you know, what I'm talking about, questions to ask, the bio, just everything. So that's really great. And guys, within 20 minutes of me joining, I it was already, uh, let's see, where is it? I had already gotten invitations or it looks like invitations to me. I'm not exactly sure, but it's invitations or matches, I guess is what you'd call it, a pod match. That's a, <laughs> Love that name. That's a good show um, right there. I actually, I, I um, yeah, anyway, that, that's a good one. Uh, yeah. So of people that cool. It would be good for me to tell, tell us what we are looking at here. This is somebody who would be good for me to um, reach out to for an interview. Yeah, that would be, that's a host that's suggesting that's a good show. Um, Josh has a great rep. I mean, look at the episodes they have 1800 over 1800 episodes. I mean, like that's no joke, right? Um, pretty cool. Uh, yes. Yeah, so that's a show that's suggesting you to message, which at the top, you have your four options message, maybe later pass previously interviewed. And by the way, I have walkthroughs of all this stuff. It's very easy for me to share with people. Um, but yeah, so that's that's a host is recommending that you reach out to to be a guest on the show. And it's probably yeah. recommending to them as well. So they may or may not reach out. Uh, if you just got started, it may, might take them a little bit. But uh, if if to reinforce that, can I share something real quick on, on my end? 
It's the yeah. same screen. I just want to show um, this only be a, a very quick second here. But this is that same page, but the public the public facing version of it. So um, this is if I'm not on Podmatch. This is what I would see, and so I can I can choose to send this guest a message, which also doubles as Gina's affiliate link. We always like to thank people for bringing people to the platform, but she can publicly share this. And I still get all the same information, right? And you did a very good job on the profile, by the way. But yes, you can use this as your media one sheet, whether someone's on or off of Podmatch. So that is a nice thing that we wanted to do to make it easy. Yeah, super smart. Very good. Thank you. Okay, Dorothy? Yeah. Um, I, I know that the probably the answer is you should sign up for Podmatch, but if somebody is not on Podmatch, what is a good way to get started to find um, podcasts as a guest that are good potential matches? What kinds of searches? Are there, is there anything on AI, maybe through perplexity or something like that? Or we do a Google search. What would you do if you know some of the topics and audiences that you'd like to get at and you want to at least start looking through and seeing what podcasts are there? Yeah. Uh, I mean, first off, I would go to whatever player app is yours, your choice player app. So like Spotify, Apple, any of those things and do a search to see if it exists, mm -hmm. right? Like to see if there are even shows that cover that. Um, and then from there, I would suggest picking some of those out and then just doing a Google search for those shows mm -hmm. and then finding them on social media, but specifically the platform they're most active on, not your favorite platform, right? I think a lot of us make that mistake. We like Instagram, so we go there, but they're only on LinkedIn. You want to go where they're most active and then you can message them. Um, and uh, sometimes that'll work. Like obviously you Hopefully they're active somewhere, but that's probably the best place to start. Um, beyond that, there are some Facebook groups. It's a bit more general and has a mix. So you can join some different Facebook groups. So it'll have like um, a bunch of people looking for guests and a bunch of people looking to guests. And you can kind of start commenting on some of those and stuff like that. Again, do make sure you have some sort of media one sheet though, because the comments you want to keep really short, but you want to be able to link out to something. So again, I'd suggest manual searching on the platforms uh, or going to some Facebook groups. And those are kind of two... Two things that it's a little bit more administrative work, but it can you you can do it that way for sure. Okay, thanks. Yeah, no problem. By the way, I'm never going to push anyone to join Podmatch. I'm just making that clear. I, I told I told this group that before I started. I'm like, listen, I'm not here to like promote or push anything. Uh, here to serve. So no questions are off limits. And I will say this: Podmatch is not for everybody. Um, nothing is. I don't believe so. I'm glad I got the opportunity to talk about it, but by no means am I pushing anyone to do that. So. Wait. Well, that's all right. And we have a question coming in from Stephanie. Stephanie, the floor hey, is Stephanie. Your... Hi, thank you for taking my question. So I actually recently guested on two different podcasts, um, but then I never heard from the host again. So I don't know what that means. Like, did it air? Did it not air? They didn't send me a link. I mean, I know sometimes they record way out, but um, that's, I mean, is that normal? Or is it up to me to follow up with them? It seemed like it was a little unnerving that happened twice. Yeah. You know, what's interesting. I didn't talk about this earlier, but a lot of hosts don't tell me when the episode comes out. Uh, thankfully, I'm doing everything exclusively through Podmatch right now. So Podmatch tells me when it comes out. So like, I, I know, but I'm like, why didn't you email me or message me or anything? Like, I didn't, you didn't, do you want me to share it? Like, I didn't even know it came out. And uh Sometimes hosts just get busy, and I think that in their mind, they finish producing the episode, they release it, and they're like, wash my hands of it, on to the next one. And so it might just be an administrative oversight. I, I would go to that podcast, wherever you listen, and see if your episode came out. Just go through okay. it for a little bit since the time you recorded, unless it was a really long time ago. But the other thing you do is reach out and just be like, hey, want to see what that episode was at or something I can do to be helpful? Maybe maybe they forgot. I don't know. Um, that would be my suggestion, uh, would be to do that. Mm -hmm. Okay. All right. Well, I'm glad. No, I'm not like glad it happened to you, but kind of because. Yeah, no, I get it. Yeah. If you didn't know when a show was, then I kind of don't feel so bad that I don't know when a show is. <laughs> yeah. And the weird thing is I have had it happen. I've had it happen a lot. One time it was a really big show, which I, I expected them to have like all their systems buttoned up. And I heard that the podcast was, it came out from a friend like two weeks after it came out. He was like, Hey, he was like, Hey bro, sorry. I'm like so late to hearing you on the show, but you did a really great job on it. And I was like, I didn't know that came out. Right. So, um, it's more common than it should be. Uh, so uh, again, follow up, see if it came out. If it didn't definitely like ask and just see where it's at in the queue. Great. Thank you. Yeah, no problem. All right. Very good. And thank you, Stephanie. And we have Connor coming on. Connor, what is your comment or question, sir? Right. Uh, I signed up for Podmatch about uh, maybe three weeks ago. I've done seven podcasts so far. And I was looking at the list there. I've got 11 actually scheduled right now. So wow. That's a lot. 
Good for you. Congrats. Thanks. Uh, what I found uh, interesting is that something you didn't mention, but it really does force you to think through your answers and your thought process in terms of the questions that you get asked. Because some people ask very good questions, basic questions, then all the people kind of ask say, and you say, whoa, I never thought of that kind of thing. So it actually is helping me to think through some of my material even better. I'm trying to focus more on people who've got a YouTube channel because uh, I use a YouTube a lot and I want to just edit some of their material and put it onto my website uh, as well. But overall, for those of you who are wondering uh, whether or not you should go on Podmatch or go searching through Google, I'm a good Google user, but I tell you what, this is not an expensive process. And you can sign up for one month or three months or whatever it is. If you don't like it after one month, you can say goodbye to Alex. But I think uh, the way you've got it set up, uh, the kind of uh, scheduling process that you've got is really pretty well streamlined. So kudos to you. Thank you. You know, you know what's interesting? I, I wrote down, I was just, I go through Podmatch all the time. It's just, I guess it's kind of my job, weirdly enough, right? And uh, I saw your name come up. And I wrote it down to find a podcast episode you've been on. If you have one that's out, can you drop it in the chat? Uh so yeah. I can go listen because I was I was just very intrigued by your whole profile. I'm like I want to I want to I want to hear this Irish man speaks Connor guy. Right. You know, like <laughs> <laughs> yeah. Well, well, this goes back to what Dory was talking about as well. I mean, you do, and what uh, Gina is working on today. I mean, you do have to have some kind of an interesting hook to get them interested. And quite honestly, no. I when I send out the first few ones, I actually have been refused by one person, Alex. It broke my heart. I mean, oh, I'm sorry. I have, Don't I, tell I, me that. I hate refusing people, and that makes it way <laughs> harder. I, I've been crying like one person refused me, which isn't good enough, but a few others haven't responded yet. But what did happen, though, was that after I sent out the first few hooks, a few people came back and said, Hey, I like your pitch. So basically, what I've been doing is I've been taking that core pitch, dropping the person's name into it, adapting it marginally to reflect what they want, and it's been working out nice. quite well. That's great. Um, love hearing that. And Connor brought up such an important point, by the way. I, I think that what podcast guesting does for you, I'm so glad you mentioned that. Like, I need to make sure I mention that in the future. What it's done for me is like a speaker is like I'm night and day better speaker, just in my own personal life as well. Like it's I'm not gonna say it's it's impossible to catch me off guard with questions, but I can typically very quickly think of how to answer something because I feel like I've answered a lot of those. So um that's a really that that I like that, Connor. Thank you. That's a good, that's a good thing Thank to mention. You. I appreciate it. Very good. And Greg Williams, what is your question or comment as we uh, wind down here and get ready to move along? Well, for, for one thing, I definitely have to say thank you, Alex, because I'm one of the individuals that uh, has been interviewed uh, a lot uh, on different podcasts. 9.9 .9 times out of 10, I do not send anything else out about the podcast or anything. And I was pondering exactly why I do it. And I said, hey, maybe it's when I bump my head. I don't know. Uh, but my question is, is it too late to possibly go back a year or two ago and start sending those out? No, not at all. I, I actually, um, for a little bit, I'm going to be really transparent here. For a little bit, I, I decided I needed to get out of some of the daily communication side of things, which was what people always tell software founders. I've since changed my mind. I want to be front facing. I'm a very unconventional software guy. I want to, if you email or message, I want it to be me. Right. And for a little bit, I got out of that. And it turns out the person I hired wasn't sharing any of them. And I didn't know this. And I got back into it. And then I found out almost a year later that there was this gap of podcasts and I started sharing them then. And every, almost every single one of those hosts reached out to me saying, thank you. And funny thing is, a lot of them invited me to come back on the show after I did that. It wasn't intentional. One of the guys even goes, this was brilliant, dude. He's like, you waited a year to share it, so I'd invite you back. And I was like, not intentional. I'm like, it's called bad management, you know? Like, But uh, so that story, just to say, I think it could be a blessing in disguise. I'm not saying like, keep that as a practice, but yes, go back and share it. Come up with a strategy for why you would share it and stuff. And I think it'd still be very... It's valuable. It's still your story, your message. It doesn't matter when someone hears it. They might be looking for it today and they weren't looking for it a year ago. Yeah, I like that. The idea we don't have to think, oh, it's over. I can go back. And Greg, that's a great marketing idea. A great way to build relationships. Thank you. Thank you. Very yeah. good. And we have a question also from Anne. We'll be our last one here before we head on to some other information. Anne, nice to see you. What's your question tonight? Best for last. Best for last, right? Yeah. Um, yeah, you'll love it. So first of all, one thing I want to say is with my, so I finished my first season. I have seven episodes. They're all up. I'm doing a podcast. I'm doing the interface on the, because of the way that 
because of my focus, I'm really intersecting both the podcast, the audio and the visual. And the visual is really important on my YouTube channel. I think maybe Chris had mentioned that. So it's grateful to hear that. And I always follow up um, because part of my invitation to people, so I'm doing a lot of interviewing, my invitation is I will always let them know I want them to get that out. I want them to use the interview with me for their benefit. That's part of the enrollment conversation, you know, that it's free advertising for them. And then the way I do the interview, it's just a natural interface for them to then take it and move it out. So that was one thing I wanted to just share. That's smart. I'm trying to get on, by the way. So I clicked on Gina's link and I think I'm on Spotify and iHeart, but I'm not on Apple. And on the registration, it's asking for Apple. So Ooh. I don't know how to register. So I want to go register. Yeah. So that, that is a, a good problem. Huh? If, if you're a host, you need to be on, on Apple to do that. Um, okay. But whoever you host with will very easily, it should just be a click of a button to get you on Apple, which would be great for you because Apple owns a very large percentage of the market share of podcasting. So your listenership will start to climb quick because you're going to one of the main places people listen to podcasts. I use Apple Podcasts. So, um, All right, so yeah, so right your hosting now, provider. And, sorry, go and ahead. I've been using Anchor. So if I just yeah. go back into my Anchor account, go and get myself on Apple and then come back, click on that link and register. Correct. Yep. It'd be good to go once it's on Apple. But yeah, and, and you definitely want to do that because it, it'll be great for your the growth of your show for sure. So that, that should give you a very cool natural bonus uh, to grow the show a little bit too. So that's great. Getting- not natural. And thank you very much for being here. Yeah. Thanks, Ann. Appreciate it. Congratulations on seven episodes. That's amazing. Alex, you are amazing. You have given us a boatload of information that we just love. We're glad we can go back and watch the recording on this and learn from it. Uh, Amazing. Gina, what are your thoughts? Oh my goodness. Uh, I know we could probably go for another hour with questions, but that's (laughs) definitely one of my favorite topics. Uh, You've really clarified what we need to do, whether we're using pod match or not. Uh, You've emphasized and reminded us all how important it is to get on podcast because it helps you to speak more clearly, helps you to articulate what you're doing. And you really just get into a rhythm when you when you do that. And these thoughts just keep coming and and it makes it so much easier whether you're on stage uh, on a real stage or whether you're on a virtual stage. And so it's it's really good. And it adds so much more credibility to you as well when you are sharing that you were interviewed people Mm say oh no you're the real deal you you know this stuff that is so true it it really is um i recently someone asked they're like hey what i I don't remember what line of work they're in but it was like random they're like uh they're like yeah what's like what makes you credible to do this and i was like well i saw them they had spotify in their phone like open up your spotify like type in alex sanfilippo and then they just started scrolling and they're like these you're on all these shows and they just kept on scrolling, like going through. And it, it, I've been at this for a long time, so I'm not saying that happened overnight. But they were like, "Wow, okay, so yeah, you're you're the real deal." Like everyone wants to talk to you. It seems like, um, so yeah, it it offers that credibility. But one podcast does that too. So yeah. Anyway, very good, Alex. Amazing. And matter of fact, I see we still have we have a question from Frank King, but we're running out of time. So I'll tell you what, Frank, we want to honor you with your question. Alex, would you mind uh, maybe corresponding with Frank in the chat between the two of you? Can do a private or Public yeah. that way. Make sure we get that taken care of. And Frank, we'll look forward. Let us know what that is, and we can amplify that in another way. Because I want to make sure we get to the commit we have with Dorothy Erlinger today. To, uh, before we scoot out, we get a chance to do one thing. But Alex, thank you so much. We really thank appreciate you, Alex. For sure. You thank you for having me, everybody. Y'all are awesome. This was amazing. Really enjoyed our time. Very good. Good Thank to have you. Thank you so much. Well, that was amazing to see what Alex had to say about the kinds of ways that you can grow with podcasting. I think that's great. But I would say, yes, you can do that with podcasting and then use AI and other tools to expand your range even more. Really, when you think about it with business, the more people that know you in a favorable way, the better off you're going to be. That's key. I remember hearing that from Brian Tracy long ago and realized I've seen that as well. And what Alex is talking about is you're getting to know more people in a much better way than just sending an email. You're getting to know them. You're working on a joint venture for a moment there that you're on that podcast together. With AI, you can find just the right podcast that can work for you. A service like Alex has with Podmatch can help you as well. So look into that and hey, let us know what you think. We really want to help 
help you to build your business. This is more than just a little podcast that you're listening to or a video that you're getting it, whichever way you're getting it. We're here to help you at Stark Raving Entrepreneurs. You go over there to starkravingentrepreneurs.com, you'll find out about us. And we want to help you to really grow your business, let it be something that you can build on a solid foundation and grow from there. Let us know what you think and I'll look forward to hearing from you. Oh, and we got some really good videos designed for you that are coming up next. Be sure and catch those. They really are designed carefully to help you to grow your business. I'll look forward to hearing from you.